Hello out there, citizens of Lockdown Land, and welcome to the Spirit Box. This week, we welcome Elise Orsa to the show. Now, regularly, you'll often hear um, um, podcasts uh, talk about when they're, when they're having shows, uh, talking about uh, some paranormal topics. They, they, they experience some sort of um, technological breakdown, that something's interfering with the show. And as I had prepped to, to record this show, I was ready to rock and, and had everything set up. Um, all of a sudden, my computer just, bump went dead. And it was not responsive, which is quite worrying, to be honest. I'm not going not gonna to lie. Um, and it took quite a bit to get it going. About 20 minutes of tinkering. And then when I got it going, Zoom wouldn't work. And then naturally, I accused our guest of witchcraft. Um, turned out that wasn't the case. I just needed to update Zoom. But um, one can often conflate the two updates and software and, um, you know, malefic trickery. But it turned out um, to be worth the wait because we had a great show. We had a great chat. So Elise is a card reader. She's a cranial sacral therapist, a practicing witch and a creator of the beautiful The Blood and Ink Tarot. Uh, her magic practice is rooted in traditional witchcraft and it focuses on personal sovereignty coupled with an evolving relationship with land and spirit. Now Elise draws on her interest in the intersections of holistic healing modalities, the cunning tradition, witchcraft and expanded states of consciousness. She's currently producing a body of work on her research and medical journey over the past seven years with uh, Gloucestershire uh, cunning woman, Ellen Hayward, who died in 1911. She was also one of the last women in, the Glo in Gloucester to be uh, uh, tried for, um, Gloucestershire rather, to be tried for witchcraft. Elisa's witchcraft is largely solitary and spirit based. She's evolved through her experience as, uh, it has evolved through her experience as a therapist. She is guided uh, by her work with Hecate. Her, her connection to Kasonic currents of the British landscape and the deep reverence for those who've come before. She teaches tarot and designs individual bespoke rituals for transformation and empowerment. So we speak a bit to those transformation rituals in terms of road openers and kind of um, the work that led to the creation of the tarot deck. Now, those of you who are watching on YouTube will see um, I mean, the, the thumbnail for, for the, the, the video art is um, amalgamation of different um, cards in the deck. And um, when you'll see cards in the video notes, it is really, really beautiful. So um, do have a look when, if you get a chance or check out the show notes. And yeah, it's, it's some really nice stuff, some really, really beautiful images. Um, and it's just a fantastic story of how they're created. This is feverish time after some road opener um, workings fueled fueled by passion and whiskey you know as as a lot of the best things in life are <laughs> anyway um at least runs a coffee and cards free daily morning uh, tarot practice on zoom for tarot readers of all abilities again links in the show notes and she does a monthly fortune telling session i uh, call on zoom called le salon de la fortune um now one of the things that really uh, stands out for me uh, with elise is um her the way she teaches spellcraft how she deconstructs it into its component parts, um, which well, for a person who's quite visually, um, who learns really visually like I do, was just massively helpful and really illuminating, but also really, it's really well put together, really well constructed. And I would uh, advise publishers out there to snap her up before she's gone. Um, before you miss the boat um, so the lecture is called My Secrets of Spellcraft uh, Spellcrafting rather and um, I think she's doing a, a few more soon so by all means sign up for those okay that's enough from me on with the show Elise, you're you're so welcome to the Spirit Box. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, and I suppose will we do just to get you quickly, just to tell people who you are. Obviously, I've already gone through this in your introduction, but in your own words. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I am I'm a card reader. I am a 
lifelong participant in the weird and the magical. <laughs> um, I am, yeah, you know, I, I consider myself a traditional witch, uh, meaning that, yeah, I'm really drawn, I'm drawn to kind of traditional folkloric practices as opposed to more ceremonial ways of working. Mm -hmm. um, no judgment there, but it's just the, the things that feed me. Yeah. Um, are also like in relationship with, with the land mm -hmm. is a big part of my practice. Um, yeah, what else, <laughs> what else do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, for, for those who, who, who obviously maybe don't know you, um, uh, you sent me a, an, an invite to your My Secrets in Spellcrafting uh, webinar, and I watched the video afterwards, and it was, it was absolutely brilliant, and I have I've a huge amount of, of questions from that, because you, reading through the, the deck and the video, and, and watching the video afterwards, you put things together in a way that kind of just really made an awful lot of sense to me. It was, um, you know, I was like, oh, right, okay, that's how that works. And, and that kind of how these things put together. So that was, that was phenomenal. And, and, you know, I'm delighted that I've, I've got a chance to ask you kind of more questions on it um, from a very selfish perspective. Um, but first off, I kind of want to ask you about, you know, when you talk about your practice as, you know, being traditional witchcraft and having a relationship with land and spirit. Mm -hmm. like, tell me a bit about that, particularly the land to start with. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I came, I came into, into magic and into witchcraft, I guess like reading, reading tarot cards was my gateway drug, which kind of opened, <laughs> opened a lot of <laughs> theory and possibility for me. Um, and then, you know, a big part, a big part of how I work is I come, you know, I come from Alabama, from small town in the deep south, which has a very rich, rich and troubled history and um, a huge, you know, there's this huge element of, um, I was, I was raised in a family who were always talking about ghost stories and talking about, um, yeah, just the his the history and the place and, uh, uh, you know, the, all the women in my family could see could see the ghosts and all the big houses and, and things like that. And we lived in this small town that, um, you know, white people lived on one side of the railroad tracks, black people lived on the other side of the railroad tracks. There was also um, a Native American reservation. So there's just so much history there as far as um, the Native American history, the civil rights history, all of that. And just the sense of place from a really young, young age is kind of, is. And you see this in the Southern writers, uh, the fiction writers as well. The sense, the sense of place is really, really heavy. Um, but when, when I moved to the UK, in many ways, I felt like my bones belonged here. And you know, my ancestors, if you trace them far enough back, eventually <laughs> are, from, are from Britain. Right. Um, so you know, over really maybe over the last 20 years, it's been a process of finding myself in this land so yeah kind of coming back to the ancestral home visiting um i guess you yeah places of power here you know of course you start like with stonehenge and avebury but then there's such you know i love i used to do do long distance walks um and just head out uh with it with a tent uh following pil or the old pilgrimage trails and oh. yeah so there's just like amazing you know all of the the neolithic bronze age hill forts and there's things you come across in the land uh so over a course of many years i really got used to just kind of following following my feet and getting lost <laughs> in finding finding these places that's awesome and when, when you talk about i mean i guess I, I see what you mean in terms of kind of like those powerpoints i mean when you look at this, the, the spirit side of what you do are, are those power places you know, are, are they are, are they busy places? Are they are they full of spirits? Is, is yeah, that... yeah, yeah. I do like yeah. I oh yeah, for sure. I mean, some of them are, some of them aren't. Some of them, you know, there's layers, there's layers and patterns. So some of them, I think, the spirit, the access to the spirit world is can be pr very protected and and very hidden. So you have to build um, allies. You have to make friends and uh, treat the place with with respect before you're you're allowed into that that other side of it. Um, but you know, for sure I get, for me, it's a very physical sense, you know, so I, I feel, um, 
Jim, Jim Gary, she talks about, she has this wonderful world from the Cornish tradition called Sproul. I, I, did, I suppose that's how she pronounces it. I don't know. Um, but it refers to like, you know, the serpent energy of the land that, um, that the witch, especially what you would call a traditional witch, is drawing upon to use in her magic. So I have a really physical felt sense of that. And I have a felt sense of, um, I guess, like energy patterns that come that come from within the land itself. Mm -hmm. And then also what I think of more is like ley lines where you feel currents above the land. Okay. Um, so when I'm exploring, exploring a place, I tend more to tune into the stuff that's um, that's within the land itself rather than rather than the currents above it, because I. I don't know. I just, yeah, I like, I like the cathonic and I like the underworld. <laughs> <laughs> Go deep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so when we look at the spirit side of that, and you mentioned there, yeah. spirit, spirit allies, um, and, and I guess building uh, your relationship with your ancestors, but also with the spirits of place. Can you talk mm. about that a bit? Um, you know, when, like when I go, I mean, I do, you know, I talk to trees. So when I speak, when I talk about spirit allies, I'm not necessarily, sometimes it's deity. Sometimes it's, it's the spirits of the dead. Sometimes it's even more just patterns, patterns of, of history of things that happened there in the past where there's an energetic imprint that that's left in the place. And so I mainly, you know, I would mainly work in vision with that, just really, really tuning in. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes i yeah i think i think a lot of people going into magic think that oh you know i don't i don't get the spirit communication it, like the spirits aren't speaking to me in full sentences in english or i'm not <laughs> seeing this visual movie in front of my place so i'm really crap at <laughs> communicating with spirit but um for me like it yeah it doesn't it doesn't come that way sometimes it's more it's just a physical I get the heebie-jeebies yeah. or I feel like a, a whoosh, yeah. you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's visual impressions or emotions. Um, so for me, like the interacting with the spirit world is much more about like using your whole body as this kind of sensing, feeling communication right. tool. Um, and yeah, I just want to acknowledge like always, always being respectful, you know, like not, mm -hmm. not putting your agenda or even, expecting that you have the right to be mm -hmm. in a place right okay that that's really interesting i like i i can see the link with that and and like you know your healing work um in terms of like using your whole body to sense what what's around you yeah uh, I, I i have a question from from a personal perspective because i used to get this thing an awful lot where um i mean not so much now but i did for a while um i was like i i did a, a full a full kind of Reiki uh, course mm -hmm. and practice and, and like I I'd got a my Reiki master um in uh, and level or initiation or whatever you call it um and it's a long time ago but afterwards mm -hmm. I kept hearing like sound all the time when I was going to sleep I'd hear kind of like um weird kind of babbling that I couldn't you know it sounded like mm -hmm. talking but I couldn't make anything out but it used to yeah. scare the living crap out of me. You know, I, yeah. I, I wasn't well, I wasn't welcomed. <laughs> you know, I was like, <laughs> I'm not enjoying this. This is really weird. Me yeah. Out. And, it, and yeah. it's happening every night um, until eventually it's, it's wow. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. you know, when you, when you start doing, um, when you start doing any kind of energetic work like that, it mm. really, it really opens you up to, um, I mean, I, I call it like a wide perceptual field. Right. And I think this is what between my, my experience as a craniosacral therapist and then leading into my magical practice, this is really something that I've taken, I've taken from, mm -hmm. from the therapy into magic that I can't imagine doing magic without it. Um, yeah. Because it, it really is, it both, it both, yeah, it both opens you up to be able to sense and feel Mm -hmm. the say the other world the spirit world yeah. but also just like subtleties subtleties of energy in the land subtleties of rela energy mm -hmm. energetic relationships between you and other people or between mm -hmm. you know your spell work that you're yeah. sending out yeah. as well um so but it creates it creates that fine nuanced perceptual ability with a very grounded sense of you know self and other 
-hmm. And I think, yeah, I think, you know, I see this as where like a lot of people who are very empathic get, um, get in trouble is right. because, because they have, they have, that they don't have great, they don't have good boundary control. <laughs> and it's yeah. that sense of self, self and other that has to be really, really managed. felt very, yeah, managed. And it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a practice in any kind of, in any kind of practice, like witchcraft or magic or psychic abilities, you've really, that's, that's where you start is um, looking after yourself, you know? Yeah. That makes an awful lot of sense. Yeah. That yeah. makes an awful lot of sense. And, and when you're doing your, uh, your cranial, cranial sacral therapy, mm -hmm. like, did, did you ever have any uh, like sensations of like, I can feel energy here. I can feel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is, you know, um, cranial sacral work. It's a body, it's a body work, a somatic mm -hmm. therapy, but you know, I, I don't think we can pretend that it's not energy healing or it's not even a psychic, uh, a psychic practice yeah. as well. So mo it's a very, very light touch. And so most of it is you know, energetically sensing what's going on for a person. What's, what are the energetic, emotional, physical patterns that are, that are organizing mm -hmm. what's going on for this person? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's, 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 a very, yeah, it's a very deep and careful work in that mm -hmm. way. Um, so we spoke a bit before um, in kind of our, our, our emails and, and chats back and forth about um, uh, road openers and your, 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 your tarot cards, um, mm -hmm. yeah, the blood and ink uh, deck you, you've created. Um, but the cards are really beautiful. They're really interesting. Um, and I know when you, 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 you talked about it, there was a lot of kind of like the you kind of, there was the workings you did and road openers and the cards came and, and then the, 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 the spell craft came. Can you tell the story of how that all fits together? Of how, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm still kind of piecing together how it all yeah. <laughs> works, <laughs> works and how, what, what the hell is going on. Um, so, but basically what happened kind of end of January, it would have been um, the new moon, like just before I think the new moon was just before Imbol. Um, we did, I have, I've got a small working group. So we did a, a road opener. So each person had like a particular, um, thing they wanted, they wanted to open the ways for, and we performed this road opener ritual, um, uh, with Hikate. And, um, for me, because I was leading it, you know, I had a very particular petition, um, with, that I made, but because I was leading it as well, like my, my energy in the ritual was more with the group than with what I was trying to manifest in, in this particular spell. So I left and I kind of thought, eh, you know, that was, that was powerful for the group. I had the space, you know, that was great. I would probably have to revisit this road opening personally myself. And then maybe the next week, um, with some members of the same group, there was, it was fantastic for, um, for Imbol, it was a, um, a fire walking ceremony. I don't know if you've ever walked on hot coals before, but that was, it was a first time for me. No, <laughs> I highly, highly recommend it. Um, so, um, we, yeah, we did a couple of path workings with Bridget, mm -hmm. um, one with the Bridget of the deep well and the other one oh, with wow, the, the fantastic. fiery, fiery nature of Bridget. Yeah. And, um, we had these hot coals on the ground, which were laid out in a cross. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a one arm of the cross for each of the four directions. And before we went in, um, the person who was leading the fire bit said, you know, people usually have to, you have to face your fears. We've got all night, take your time. And I'm thinking, I've got a kid at home. We don't have all night. And so in I went. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. I love it. Absolutely. I've only got a sitter till nine o'clock. I got to get on with yeah, this. No, exactly. You know, like the magic has to fit into my life. <laughs> but um, I think, you know, I think in, the, in a way that kind of just didn't, didn't create the possibility for fear mm -hmm. to really take root. Right, right, right. And so, you know, we ended up, it wasn't just once across the coal. I think we did like all four directions from both Oh, wow. Ways. Cool. Um, and then in the end, we were just kind of going back and forth and crossing yeah. each other. Yeah. And, um, and I remember like my thing I was really focusing on was like clear vision. Right. Um, that was, that was the thing was the real focus. 
So that's what February the first, right? Mm -hmm. um, I go home to nurse nurse my feet. <laughs> 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 On Valentine, so this must have been full moon, maybe ish mm -hmm. by that time. Valentine's evening, I'm at home, it's a Friday night, on my own, and I think, I could do a tarot deck. <laughs> like, no planning <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> and, and then I'm like, yeah, okay, we'll just do like the major, major cards. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, like, well, you know, let's, you know, I need to put in some rules because otherwise I get into the space of, oh, it's not good enough. And I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I have to go and I just make it worse. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, the rules are, like each card's like three minutes, two colors, red and black. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all you need, really, <laughs> is two colors. And uh, we'll do like mono prints. I've got all of God's watercolors in the house. So we'll put, mm -hmm. paint it on glass, print it onto yeah. uh, watercolor paper. And then over that, over that weekend, you know, I did the entire major arcana in the weekend. Um, and it really, it was this place, like just something something was working through me right. and so although each card was very quick i would do that you know i'd print it i would go back in and work into it and i was kind of grabbing anything on my table i could to like you know i had old like bits of tape that i would mask mm -hmm. out some of the figures with or yeah. i had a carrot that i was using to stamp <laughs> body parts and you know matchsticks to uh, bits of string yeah. spanish yeah. moss some mugwort from the garden to get a certain mm. pattern you know, like just whatever whatever yeah. happened to be here and um and i was drinking a lot <laughs> so, like that was out that like i do drink but i don't drink that much so what was clear to me was like some something else was bringing this through and right. yeah yeah it needed it fuel. needed alcohol yeah. it needed fuel <laughs> yeah but yeah it was like whiskey whiskey in the morning kind of drinking for <laughs> breakfast um which is which is not me um so i got you know got to the end of the weekend and mm. said wow you know i've actually i've felt pretty pretty crazy like mm. i've actually done this entire entire major arcana in two days wow and a friend said to me, oh, well, you've got to do the minors now. And I was like, no, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> it's like, you're insane. <laughs> but then it was like, yeah, okay. It's just kind of started, it started yeah. coming out. And um, I love, you know, the way, I love reading playing cards. And I love using playing cards for magic as well. I just think mm -hmm. they're much more... Um, they're very, very specific in the information they, that they give and very talismanic. So yeah. I was like, okay, you know, the, um, the minor cards is going to be playing card suits rather than like pips, like you would yeah. get in other, other tarot decks. And so I just started chur churning them out. So two mm -hmm. weeks later, um, the pips went much slower, but yeah, mm -hmm. two weeks later I had an entire deck. Um, wow. And then I was looking at getting them printed and self-publishing them and then Corona mm. hit and it was yeah. really like not the right time. Mm -hmm. um, I went into, as a, after I finished them, it was, yeah, I felt like I'd given birth to something. Like it was yeah. really it was yeah. this huge, huge burst of energy and not really understanding mm -hmm. where it was coming from. And really each card, I was going into this kind of this trance and journeying with it. And I had this dream, and um, in the dream, there was a voice telling me that it, the, the deck was a grimoire. Um, wow. Yeah, so it's, I'm still working, I mean, I'm working with each, each card um, mm -hmm. in vision and med meditation and also just reading, reading with it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to work out what, <laughs> what that means, what, the, what their mm -hmm. purpose is. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel they have a consciousness and a voice. They want, mm. they, they're ready to be out there with people. Yeah. Um, other people who have seen them, they're like, oh, they're, those are beautiful, but they're kind of scary. It's like, <laughs> this is one of the comments that I've gotten. Mm. Um, some people say, oh, like each, that this card is a portal. Yeah. You know? um, so at this point, I can, cannot confirm or deny <laughs> <laughs> what the cards are for. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm work. I, I, I watch this space, and also, yeah. it's clear to me that they want to be out, and they want to be out in the hands of people right. who are going to do magic with them. Yeah. You know, not just for divination, but people who are going to use them as a mm -hmm. magical tool. 
so yeah so that we're doing like a hundred a hundred copies limited edition should be ready in like three weeks awesome well um, i mean obviously i'll have one there you know <laughs> put, put my you. name down um well i mean they, they, they are beautiful and and the, the images you shared i mean they, they're it's so dramatically different from anything i've seen you know in in that space and that kind of um mm. deck you know it, it um i've never seen anything like them when it comes to kind of divination tools and like a, like a set deck uh, it, yeah. they're really really beautiful um and uh and just yeah it's so interesting you look at them and you see things in them you know it, it is it is that yeah they're a bit a bit like a rorschach yeah exactly like, like that yeah yeah, really yeah. you really see yeah. complete something different every time yeah. you look at them yeah. yeah really interesting and so that's that's really interesting we talk about that kind of that connection between kind of the road opener and and you know kind of clear vision it seems like though that was like you know um so I guess I, something saw the opportunity in you as well there to kind of to get that out. There was like a, a, a it was a communal effort. It was a joint effort. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, like I don't know, I'm kind of dense. So I, you know, while I was in that space, I didn't see the connection with the road opener. <laughs> 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 and so like a good friend of mine that was like, yeah, it's the road opener. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this shit works <laughs> yeah i mean that's that is the thing people need to get on get on board with it's like this shit works <laughs> this shit works it never doesn't work sometimes it doesn't work like you think like yeah. you think you want it to work you know then yeah. you tweak it and you refine it but yeah, yeah it always works <laughs> yeah. yeah well it was like going back to what you were saying in 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 kind of my secrets of spellcraft when you were describing the components that make up a spell and you you talk about you being really precise in your language you know being yeah. kind of, you know you have to talk about things in a very um prescriptive way when you're starting out yeah. with your intention um yeah you know um yeah because spirit logic is different to human logic you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah it is there's that but then also i think we don't listen to ourselves we don't listen to the words that we use to ourselves as yeah. well so i talk a lot about this um moving you know when you're setting an intention or making mm -hmm. a petition in yeah. in your spell moving your language from want and need like i want a new job or i need a new job to words like desire and require because mm -hmm. want and need it there's a distance between you and the thing the thing that you're mm -hmm. after um and desire and require really taps it into something that's really based in your like your in your will and like your internal right. the internal fire in yourself and switching, you're switching your intention, the language you use and your intentions to those words. I think it does just get you much more, it gets you much more precise with your mm -hmm. language, but it also, it also, yeah, so many people, I think just don't, don't allow themselves to have desires right. or, you know, to yeah. ask to really go for something that they want mm -hmm. for them, that mm -hmm. they need in their life, you know, yeah. so it just allows, it allows them to to exercise that mm -hmm. agency okay that's that's really cool yeah I, I, that's something that i definitely want to kind of bring into my practice and you mm -hmm. know um and i you know i genuinely will be referring to your work <laughs> when i do that with some of the workings that i've got planned that's yeah <laughs> really really pretty pretty um so what was i going to say as well as like for those people who've missed that are, are you you're planning to do some more um talks on yeah yeah for sure um so we did you know we did the workshop um last week and what i'm hoping to do is maybe do just like a weekly discussion group with mm -hmm. people because pe that you know there was just it was a really special evening it really like it had such we had the had the talk yeah. for about an hour and then we just stayed on for an hour and a half um workshopping like why didn't this work why should what should i do here oh, cool. um and yeah, I would really, I want to really like roll out some more talks and also just create, create like a weekly, a weekly meetup for people to, um, to talk magic. And a few, you know, a few of the things I, I talked about in the, um, in the lecture, I really skimmed some surface, the surface on some stuff yeah. that's, you know, like maybe like a four week uh, process to learn, properly. to learn properly. Yeah. So there's uh, yeah. ways that we can go deeper with some of that as well. 
So I have two subjects I want to ask you about. Um, uh-huh. So the first is hagstones. <laughs> what is the significance of hagstones? <laughs> whenever I see, whenever I could occasionally look away, I immediately think of you. Where I see, it. yeah. <laughs> I'm, like I am the undisputed Hagstone queen. <laughs> so, for those of our listeners who aren't familiar with what a Hagstone is, could you explain? Yeah. So, <laughs> a Hagstone, and they're also called holy stones. So, it's a stone that you find that has a naturally occurring hole through it. Um, and they have <laughs> they have a lot of a lot of um, magical and folkloric uh, resonance because you know you find one and it's special. It's like wow, how did how did that hole get there? Mm-hmm. So there's um, folkloric beliefs that they um, they have um, aperture. Ap- <laughs> it's the first time I've not been able to say that word. <laughs> <laughs> apotropaic <laughs> qualities so they're you know they're protective yeah. they um they would protect against witchcraft for instance right. in some some folklore traditions you might see them um hung strung up uh with an iron key and hung in barns to protect against evil spirits okay um for me so like i normally people find them at the seaside mm-hmm. uh which is what you would expect because you think that you know that's how the whole the whole mm-hmm. gets there because of the forceful passage of you know, wind and, and water and sand mm. and air over many, many years or centuries, you know, centuries, whatever, whatever it takes. So there's this strong elemental power in, in a, in a hag stone. Um, I never find them at the seaside though. And this is why, <laughs> this is why it's a thing for me yeah. is, you know, I live this, I live this magical life where I'm outside in the woods every single day mm. And I find them, uh, you know, in North London. I find them in the woods. <laughs> so, oh, you know, I, I think I think I sent you guys pictures. I'm like, I've yeah, been yeah, 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 yeah. Around the reservoir, I found ten hagstones. You know, <laughs> 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 or last summer I was on holidays. I found sixty in the cottage. Like, mm. no water in sight, but there's sixty <laughs> hagstones around our cottage. <laughs> I mean, so that that to me is is that it, it's that real symbol of a magical life, you know, and and kind of yeah. when when people kind of enter this this world in in whatever way, you know, you know, it calls people in very very different ways, but it's that's mm. the kind of stuff that just happens all the time, you know, like yeah. kind of, you know those just little taps on the shoulder all the exactly. time, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that's you know that's the point of synchronicity. You mm. know, it's not that it's not like oh, what does this mean? Well, what does yeah. it mean? It means to pay attention. Yeah, you know, it means yeah, to keep yeah, yeah. going. It means yeah. you're on, you're like you're walking the path, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, I kind of, I have, I can kind of smell them. You know, like, I can feel them when I'm about to find one. <laughs> like, I just, I just know. And <laughs> I have this this theory that there's like this energetic imprint that I'm I'm kind of tuned in with, and so right. I start feeling. And then I'm more likely to see it if it's there, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for me, it really, it really, you know, I look at the the places, the woods that that I go to every day. I look after them, you know. I pick up, mm-hmm. I pick up trash. I'm kind mm-hmm. to. Um, I have certain like certain spirit allies there, mm-hmm. and so for me, it's a way. It's a way that the forest or the woods give back to me. As well. Okay. And when you talk about spirit allies in in, in the woods, I'm. I, mean, I guess. If, in in the need to categorize them you know um I, yeah sorry <laughs> like, what, what? i resist that need because yeah. <laughs> i don't know i don't know okay well that was really it. yeah if, if you don't know that's a perfectly valid response to, you know, what 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 are you sensing what, 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 are you, what are you um okay so always always i'm just kind of following my feet and yeah. you know i go I go there with my senses open, with this wide perceptual field, mm-hmm. really, really feeling grounded, um, my feet kind of sinking into the currents. Um, sometimes I'll go, you know, I'll go with the intention of like, I need a particular plant to do mm-hmm. a thing. I needed a nightshade. So I'd never found a nightshade, in, <laughs> you know, ever. <laughs> and um, I wasn't even sure if I'd recognize one, if I saw yeah, one. Yeah. Um, and but I was just like okay, like yeah, really pay woods. I'm here. I need a nightshade, and I just just followed my feet. And within 15 minutes, here's this purple and yellow, bittersweet 
um, nightshade plant right in front of me, and now it's everywhere I look. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so really, you know, I might. I have a couple of a couple of places that I go that I know have really um, that they're part of, they're part of the ancient woodland that mm. uh, that used to cover used to cover Britain, and so there's yeah, man, there's just some deep deep old stuff in right. those in those woods. Um, nature spirits elementals um i you know i guess like my closest my closest allies i tend i tend to associate them with trees very mm. particular certain trees um which i do which i do a lot of a lot of personal personal work and and uh, and pay a lot of respect for as well so i do everything from you know just just leaving offerings to going and saying hey how shall i how shall I handle this particular thing? And then I just pay attention to what I find. Um, I've seen things from time to time that I've got no idea. <laughs> Don't well, know. <laughs> I mean, I have to ask to for for <laughs> a description. <laughs> you can't drop a chestnut like that and just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Only whatever you're comfortable with. Only whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, I've I've had like yeah, I've had let's say I've had visualizations of non-human non non-human beings, which mm -hmm. I felt I felt were given to me after after a period of time where I'd kind of mm -hmm. earned that respect or that level of of the forest opening up to me. Oh, wow. um, but I really I can't I can't categorize it. I you know there's mm -hmm. some pe I know some people who would say oh yeah well that was yeah that was an elemental that was a yeah, this that yeah, was a that yeah. i don't actually care <laughs> to be honest like you know it, it's a, it's mm -hmm. it's a thing that i w was in relation with in that moment um mm -hmm. yeah that's really cool really cool i i mean you know there's a lot of um there's a, there's a lot of thinking around our relationship with with woodlands and and you know the whole kind mm -hmm. of japanese thing of um what's called um forest bathing you know to, oh, yeah. to walk into woods and, and be immersed by by them and um and i i think that's hugely important i mean i, I yeah. i've never had that that level of, of um um spiritual interaction with, with woodland but i certainly yeah. get the sense of of place you know and yeah. and of you know the kind of calmness as well but you also get the sense of like you know when you get a little bit lost in the woods you know mm. how it can the place can can turn on you and slightly kind of mess you about a bit you know yeah. <laughs> it's not all love and light in the woods you know no no it's really not and that that's something that you know maybe the first two years when i was really out in nature i had you know i was like oh yeah yeah the, you know nature is abundant it's mother earth it's giving it's mm. giving um and that ain't the case, you know. Mm. I, my experience is nature doesn't give a shit if you're mm. there or not. Mm. Um, and like nature's agenda is much bigger mm -hmm. and much slower than me or mm -hmm. you, you mm -hmm. know. And there's also um, there's a you know there's a real dark a darkness in nature because mm -hmm. you like if you die, okay, your your body decomposes and feeds countless other yeah. beings. You're just That's part true. of the ecosystem, whether you're mm -hmm. alive or dead, mm -hmm. you know yeah uh, that's, that's I've, really true yeah like uh, i've always felt that as well when we talk about kind of nature is that like it, yeah it gives life but it also takes it away because life feeds yeah. on life you know yeah um yeah, for sure for sure so this coming weekend while we're recording uh you yeah. were due to talk at the magical women's conference i was yeah on <laughs> ellen hayward yeah yeah so for Luddites like me, can you tell me who Ellen <laughs> Hayward was? Yeah, so um, Ellen Hayward died in 1911. She was a wise woman, a cunning woman in um, Gloucestershire on, um, on the Welsh border down near forest, in the Forest of Dean. Um, she was one of the last women in Gloucestershire to be, to be tried for witchcraft. Mm -hmm. um there were two towards the end of her life there were two really uh sensationalized cases uh where 
she was blamed for <laughs> various yeah. various mishaps, which um, all of which you can still research in in the uh, uh, the newspaper archives. Um, so I, I guess like for the past seven years, I've been going out out to the Y Valley, the forest forest of Dean, and over, you know, from the minute I went out there, I just I really I've just really felt this affinity with the forest there it's like a fairy tale forest it's amazing oh wow um and you know just it i get like it feels like home when i go out there and if i don't go every year i get like oh god you know <laughs> gotta get like this year i'm already i'm like that so over you know i ended up i came across her grave um in in, in cinderford in the village there and that opened up this process of um one like journeying with her magically, but then also researching her life and piecing piecing mm -hmm. together as much as much information as I could find. Um, and yeah, it's, it's interesting. We've segued from the forest, <laughs> talking about the forest, into this because yeah, because for me, her story is really tied is really tied to the, the energy energy of the forest there. Um, uh, you know, I know all, all of the sensational story of her kind of happened happened very late in her life, like a couple of years before before she died. Mm -hmm. um, her life before that, which was what I've discovered, was um, you know she lived she lived in extreme extreme poverty. She was mm -hmm. in and out of the workhouse. She had five children; only two survived yeah. um, into into adulthood, which was not necessarily unusual at the mm -hmm. time, I suppose, mm -hmm. but she also you know she's described in some of the senses as a widow she was never married so you know i've seen all of the um all mm -hmm. of the baptismal records for the children they all have her her surname so it's been a process of like you know kind of i, you know, I had this idea that like i could connect with her as a tutelary spirit or you know yeah. and learn learn her witchcraft ways and and yeah. um which now feels like just incredibly incredibly silly because the relationship with her has gone it's gone much much mm -hmm. much um much deeper um and more more into this story of yeah who she like who she was as a person those are the things that i can't verify through research that mm -hmm. have come come through vision through vision work and through questing in the land so mm -hmm. it's that part of the world is um you know there's several there's several sacred wells there's um, standing stones is a, it's, it's an incredibly magical landscape. Yeah. And so I really feel her story is, is couldn't happen, couldn't happen anywhere else. Mm. Um, yeah. What else do you want to know? I've kind of lost the train of thought there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it, I mean, obviously, um, like, uh, COVID has, has put, um, you know put pay to an awful lot of of events but um is is there plans for you to to do something with her story is is that going to be part of kind of your next yeah you know first? yeah it is so uh, you know I've, i'm really been you know I've, i guess what i've what i've been researching is kind of it's like the ties between um between say cunning tradition healing traditions of the past and how that has um fed into um, both alternative therapies now, um, medical practice, as well as magical magic and, and witchcraft practices as well. So I can really, I think there's a really interesting evolution um, that's happened in, let's say, natural therapies is what we would call, we would call them now. Um, and also big divisions uh, between magical pr practitioners and what they see as, as new age uh, love and light stuff um but then at the same at the same time you know what, I, what i'm doing at the moment is i'm just i'm writing so i've got i've you know i've got her story i've got um loads and loads of research i've got loads and loads of photographs that i've taken and i'm just writing it so and it's coming out more more as a like a personal a personal magical journey and memoir than a historical um recount of her life or yeah. of of any any of those those factors I don't know what it's going to look like <laughs> like once once it's all out it could be you know god knows it could be a fiction fiction novel or it could yeah. be 
um, a series of talks or, to, you know, a, a, or as I say, a memoir. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's clear, it's clear to me that she, as a person, um, you know, at the time she would not have been, she was accused of witchcraft, but uh, like most cunning people, she would never have called herself a witch because right. at the time, witchcraft was evil and you know, it was very it was very very different from from what she was doing she called herself a herbalist and also a phrenologist which i found interesting that she right. would she would come across that term mm. um but i think for me i think what it meant was that she probably had some kind of psychic ability so she okay. said you know she she said she was a phrenologist and she could look at a man's face and tell what he was thinking wow so I think the word phrenology gave her a safe term for psychism, basically, right, okay. um, to avoid, you know, at the time of there, you, mm. if you're an old lady with magical woo-woo abilities, you're very likely to get attacked or pricked or thrown in a lake or something. Yeah, you it's know. not going to go well, is it? Um, no, the mm. newspaper archive is full, mm. of, full of stories like that. Um, yeah. As we see with her, you know, she faced pros pr prosecution mm -hmm. as well. Um, so there's just just an interesting interplay of a lot of different a lot of different themes in her life um and what's what's coming out like you know this is the question for me is like well what does she want mm. as opposed to what do what do i want from mm. from this interaction with her and you know i think what she what she wants is kind of healing healing and compassion for all the dead babies and i feel like there's mm. on some level there's there's a real grief that's yeah, very very yeah. present yeah. Um, and we, you know, we know now that this is very common to lose children back then, but, you know, yeah. we don't ever really take it into our bodies, like what, what that was like and what, what yeah. kind of person that makes you after going, yeah. going through all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's, there's no real words for that grief, really. You no. Know? Um, no. It yeah. isn't. Um, well, I'm, I mean, I'm really looking forward to kind of hear about what next, um, what's next for that story. It's, it's, it sounds really incredible, you know, um, and and giving a voice to to someone who wouldn't have had one, you know, from yeah. her gender and from, you know, her place in society and her, and her mm. profession would have just taken any kind of privilege from her, really. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's um, a wonderful, I, you know, I dug up one of the old newspapers from um, 1906. So she's, you know, she's being trashed in the papers because a family has called mm. for her. They lost 50 pounds and they want to know, like, who's, who's stolen the 50 pounds? They call her for advice. Yeah. Um, after she's called in, then the entire family, one by one, over the course of a, of a week, goes mm. insane. It's like four different members wow. of the family. One ends up in a mental hospital um, in a nearby town. Mm. The mother disappears in the woods for four days and comes back holding a hazel stick, which is supposed to protect against witches. Yeah. And so, um, so Ellen gets blamed for mm. it. And she's in the newspapers saying, no, like, you know, I'm a herbalist. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. I can cure, I've cured, what is it? I've cured, oh yeah, I've cured, oh, I've cured eight cases of cancer, but you can't cure a cancer if it's, if it's spread in more than 13 different directions. And then she goes on, I've cured hundreds of tumors and thousands of sores. And she's, mm. you know, it sounds a bit like she's kind of maybe playing up to the journalist. Right. So I put that as one possibility. The other possibility, which I, I think is, is actually maybe more possible, is that the journal that the journalist embellished it. Yeah. And yeah. you know, because he's describing her as is old and haggard and dirty and her house full of herbs hanging and chickens on the floor mm. and bottles of potions and you know, there's this romantic romantic idea of what the, the chrome witchy woman is like. Um, I mean, the so, jur journalists are still at it now, aren't they? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like they, you trust the press until you read something about you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it, it, it sounds incredible, you know. And I'm yeah, really looking forward to to seeing the next, um, the next output, you know, of, of uh, a burst of creativity. Um, <laughs> when you do it without, without the alcohol. Well, you, you, you reminded me of a story about uh, Hemingway and, and F. Scott Fitzgerald. Apparently, um, 
F. Scott Fitzgerald had a terrible drink problem, but he used to write fabulously when he was drunk. And he was trying to get off booze, and, and um, Hemingway just kept offering him alcohol. So he'd write, <laughs> you know, and it's like, you know, it's like incredibly destructive. Yeah. Uh, All right, so, he's, he's so like, if, a, if a case of beer appears at my door, Dara, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. know. <laughs> Case of beer with a typewriter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, just, just, I thought you might like these, you know, just leave them here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you want any more. You know, yeah. um, <laughs> you know it, but it, it's interesting how those things are, are, are interlinked. Like, um, people's relationship with, with substances of all kinds and, and yeah. what, people bring back or what it kind of opens the door for you know mm. like mm. That there's definitely a thing with that you know and and it brought me back to your stuff about batteries that kind of uh, yeah. internal and external batteries of like what fuel what fuels a thing you know? yeah yeah exactly and i mean and this is this is how i kind of i you know you know we're talking we're talking about my spellcrafting mm. um lecture but I get. I suppose it was like my relationship with particular, particular. Yeah. You know, I work with Hecate, so my relationship with Hecate and some uh, s- surrounding mm-hmm. spirits. Um, that they, you know, they like in different and in other traditions, uh, the spirits demand some of them very, very specific mm-hmm. offerings. You know, um, and and you give it to them because that's what you're feeding them. Um, and if you don't with some of them, then either like, they're not, you're not going to have that connection. You're not going to have that relationship or they'll extract their energetic needs from you or mm-hmm. in some in, in other ways. Yeah. Um, so this is really what Ledin has informed my thinking around like when you're performing, when you're performing a spell, it requires a power source. And so that mm-hmm. power sources are either internal like your own your own life force or external uh which would be for instance from you know, egregores or from the spirit allies you're working with even kind of energetic qualities of the different materials you're bringing you're bringing into the work um but that's yeah yeah if you if you want to send the spell it's got to have it's got to have a punch it's got to have you know just like if you're going to drive a car you know it's got to have gas in the engine yeah, basically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome if we can if we can do it i'd i'd like you to um if you don't mind to test um these amazing new cards out and if you do me uh I mean, yeah, but I guess it's it's the honor to these are a very new set of cards if you'd uh, if you'd pull a card for me. Yeah, Dara, I will. Here's the here's the thing. You only get a reading if you have a question. That's a good one. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, in fairness, I should have known that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what question can I ask that didn't wildly expose my inner world to <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I can. Uh, so, so I have, I have, a, I have a, a novel I've written, mm-hmm. um, and obviously, with all novels, I would like it to uh, have a publisher and have a life. And, you know, mm-hmm. um, what what should I do, or what can I expect? Okay, all right, cool. So I've got cards here. Mm-hmm shuffling them up so we're just i normally would not just pull one card for a question um but well, do, do the right thing gonna, yeah well, wait, we'll, we'll, we'll cheat we'll cheat for you dara okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh lovely so we pulled the world le monde um which you can see the viewers yeah. can't the listeners can't see i'll, I'll put the up on screen <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so i you know i think what this is saying about about your novel is you really you really got to live it you know, you've really, really got to em- embody the, like, literally the whole world of your novel if you're going to be able to present it okay. um, in a way, in a way that the publishers, publishers are going to, are going to accept it. I mean, you can, you can see the picture. Yeah. It look, it looks like a vagina, right? It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, 
mm. for me it's just like it's like that it's that creative power because mm. obviously but for me also this card isn't just about really the, the power of giving birth and putting mm. something into the world it's that you know we, we talked about drive and really tuning into desire mm -hmm. it's the source the source of your internal power as okay. well so i think that's something you need to look at in okay. um, getting getting the novel out there thank you i will uh, take that on board <laughs> it reads a bit to me like can you get on with it a bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not, it's not gonna finish itself is it um, it's not gonna finish no it's not gonna finish itself dara <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, so where is the best place for people to find you, to follow you, um, you know, to, to, to learn from you? Um, certainly be before you say all that, I, I really can't recommend enough um, the spell crafting uh, webinar you did. Um, I mean, I, I, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic, you know. So um, I know I'll be definitely following uh you up for the next one uh, as well so um so that's out there in cool. podcast <laughs> land you heard it here uh where's the best place to, best place to find yes you? so uh, my website is eliseorsa.com e-l-i-s-e-o-u-r-s-a um you'll find my tarot cards there um i'm looking at uh, doing more of the spellcrafting webinars or maybe pro providing the recording of the past one online and then doing some online stuff also i'm on facebook find me on facebook instagram usual places not twitter but <laughs> wait you can't do them all you know <laughs> you can't you know <laughs> at least it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for your time and um you know hopefully we'll get you back again soon yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Dara. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Elise. So, my card was drawn. Turns out I just need to get the fuck on with it. That really reminds me of the joke um, that Daryl O'Brien, the Irish comedian, used to say to students, which was this trick. Um, you know, if you want to know the best trick to help you pass your exams, if you're, if, if you're struggling, if you want to pass your exams, pass your university exams, the best tip, the best trick he has is to do a bit of fucking work during the year and get on with it. Um, which I think is uh, great advice for any ambition in life. So um, look out for Elise's uh, deck. I think they're going to be released relatively soon, um, but you can find her all over the interwebs in the links below. Give her a follow. And thank you very much, Elise, for your time. Uh, it was great to catch up with you. And um, I know we'll catch up again soon. Right. That's all for me. Thanks for listening and talk soon. <laughs> <laughs>